recording, start playing, and we're live. Welcome aboard. Hi. I'm Good just up. showing your uh, Facebook page right now, my brother. Okay. Benjamin Morales in the house. Oh, you're showing my Facebook page? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's a pop-up Jim Fannin show. What's on there? Just, I don't know, some AVI of you and Blast Up and... Song. What up, G? There's your face. Hello. I got some new uh, uh, foam uh, covers so the P's yes. don't pop and the B's don't bop and... They're too big, and they cover your big, beautiful face. Well, anyway. we can bring them down just a little bit, and boom. <laughs> Don't screw up my I sound, look though, dude. I won't. Thank you for uh, coming in, man. I uh, Sorry yeah. about today, the confusion. It was just uh, my brain's kind of foggy today, as yeah. I said. Mine's and, been scattered, uh, too, so don't you worry. Uh, yeah, so I appreciate your flexibility and for honoring your commitment. And uh, thanks for being here, brother. So That's just for do. people that don't know, I'm going to check to see that we're online. Take some time right now to introduce yourself. Take as long as you need and Coolie. talk about like where you come from, where your your, your nationality, yeah. your kind of where you went to school, how you got to here, how old you are. How old are you now? I'm 20 now, dude. 20. Like wow. I'm the big two zero. Wow. That's awesome, um, so for the viewers at home, uh, <laughs> my name is Benjamin Morales or Blast Up as uh, my screen name is. And uh, I grew up in St. Catharines. I went to Eden High School, St. Alfred's, and uh, I went to Fanshawe as well for college, which I don't recommend. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. I forgot you're St. Alfred's alum. So am I. Yes. I went there for seven and eight. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had this conversation with Bella, yeah, too. Yeah, we always yeah. forget that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've grown up, grown up here in St. Catharines my whole life. Um, and I have been really passionate about ministry, and that's been kind of my thing. Technology is my uh, my niche there. Like, that's where my talents come from. Like, or that's where my talents lie anyways, not where they come from. They come from God because, you know. Um but yeah, that's uh, that seems like a good intro to who I am and what I kind of do. Now, what were you doing today? You so, working on a project? Uh, today, this morning, I was at a church in Thorold, and I was getting their live streaming equipment ready, um, just working out kinks for them, getting set up with new software, um, getting some new equipment set up for them as well, just like actual hardware-wise, getting some like new monitors and stuff. Um, so just getting all that set up and teaching them how to use the software to the to the best that they need for right now and uh hopefully it's a stepping point for uh me going further in depth with the software and um actually teaching them even more especially when they actually have someone who's willing to volunteer in that area because mm -hmm. at the moment it's just kind of like they need people to volunteer for them and um yeah that's yeah, the, you got a great talent there. It's um, you've got a natural gift for teaching, and I've noticed it even just to help you helping me get set up with OBS. By the way, and I mm -hmm. need another lesson. I'm hungry for that. So when <laughs> when we can hang a little bit more sociably, I'd like to Heck yeah. like to do that when we can hang around the computer and you can throw throw me some stuff because I've got the tech, you know, the logistics of the basic format down, but the mm -hmm. timers and there's I know that you you're like oh just drag this. Hoop, there's boop, all boop, kinds boop. of things. Yeah, like... and it comes second nature to you, and you're really good at teaching it to others. So. You I find your, you find yourself like kind of leaning towards that end of things that you end up doing is that you end up just leading and teaching. Yeah. So the plan for me right now is actually to try and search for employment in the ministry world. I oh, okay. uh, I plan on actually going for my recognition of ministry in the in January. What's that mean? Uh, so that's going to be a year of doing Pentecostal studies, like Bible studies and stuff like that, uh, at uh, Summit Pacific in BC. I'm not moving to BC. I'm gonna, I'm doing it all online, but the hope is to actually have my recognition of ministry uh, achieved, which will allow me to work at churches and be able to do what I do best in a ministry environment. And not only that, it just it makes me look better. Like I can probably go with my current resume and say, hey, here's what I know. Here's what I can do. Um, you could hire me, but it always looks better if I have like the actual backbone of ministry behind me as well. So like or the backbone of like the theology stuff and like all this schooling. And it just it just helps my resume. You ever see yourself on the platform? 
Um, on a platform, I was seeing myself on Twitch at one point. I mean, you're always on the platform right. performing the duties that you do, but I mean, as a lead pastor or something like that, delivering messages or... As a lead pastor, probably not. Yeah. I don't think that's where I'm being called to. I think I'm more being called to maybe a youth pastor position, maybe a kid's pastor. Um, but my, my ideal thing would be just behind the scenes making sure everything is running to the fullest abil- to the fullest capacity like to uh, say for example I'm putting something online I want it to look as great as it can so that people can actually get the message down so that they can like actually sit there worship with it whether it be a worship service whether it be like uh, someone speaking so that they can get the full experience out of it yeah and it's so kind of they- like um exploiting the technology for all it's worth exactly and like just really utilizing this technology that we have and using the gifts that god's given me to serve his kingdom Mm. like that's that's ultimately what it comes down to right now have you always had a strong faith have you grown into it i mean it's like your family's pretty strong and in their faith i would say but yeah you know like i grew up catholic i was was christian yeah. but i really didn't have a strong connection to faith i f- i feel it was central because i'm just really connected there i'm connected mm-hmm. in ministry with the kids looking after the preschoolers and then video director i mean yeah wow do i miss that it's such a great thing because i got people like your sister in my ear yeah. in, like i'm in their ear you know i always try to remember to tell them i love you yeah. I'm proud of you. Nice job. Yeah. And, you know, so it softens the blow of, hey, give it, come on. <laughs> Did you fall and asleep like, or what? Because I'm, I'm pretty good about giving out the criticism too. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, every time I'm with my sister, she's always like, every time we're shooting something, we're playing with our cameras because I just got myself one as well. Um, so every time we're out playing with our cameras, she's like, oh man, I just got like Jim in my ears just being like, no, frame that up a little bit better. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. You know, there's right few, <laughs> there's few things in life that bring me joy, but hearing <laughs> that story fills me up, man. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, Cause I mean, that's all we can really uh, like, that's all I aspire to be is just a little bit of love or a little bit yeah. of inspiration or a little bit of wisdom or whatever. You know, I was talking to someone the other day. I'm like, they were calling me an old man. It was my birthday and stuff like that. And I'm 52 now. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not 24 anymore, but you know what? You can't let, and this is what I love about you so much is I see such a deep wisdom from a, a younger person, you know, uh, another G uh, well, you, you met G they played here. Yeah. Another yeah. guy, another kid, I call him, he's probably yeah. closer to 30 years old. The such deep wisdom from a young guy mm-hmm. and, and, Normally, I say you don't get wisdom without age. <laughs> Some are gifted with more of a, you know, the wisdom than others, yeah. I guess. But, you know, there's some of those things you just can't get. But like, I'm, I'm not the same guy I was when I was 24 years old. Right. Yeah. But how is your, like, have you come along strong in the faith oh, the whole time? I've come along so, so much, so much, dude. Um, I remember being in like uh, elementary school and not really understanding what anything really was just being a really weird kid with really weird uh hobbies like i was wasn't really going out much so i wasn't really hanging out with friends much i had i mean my i loved my friends but they weren't exactly the best influence on me when it came to like my faith um and honestly stuff with my faith didn't really pick up until grade seven like it was it wasn't until then until the gears started turning at like camp one year and it was just like no way there's something more to this there's something more that uh i can be doing with what i have like up at that point i was already like volunteering and stuff uh with tech and uh i was already going to church it was just a matter of actually understanding why i was there and understanding what i was doing and who i was actually serving so um one of the pastors at central like the one of the youth pastors at the time like who uh, alex mathers he was he really he he really uh instilled the values of like here's why we're volunteering here's who we're doing it for and this is how you can have fun with it even like this is not something that is necessarily just a job but it's also something you can have fun with and you can just be passionate about Mm -hmm. like when i'm behind a computer and when i'm behind like a soundboard or lighting board whatever it may be i'm having fun whether i'm being paid for or what or i'm doing it for free out of my own whatever like I'm having fun doing it. I'm worshiping God. This is how I'm showing him that, yes, I love you. And this is how I'm showing him that I want to serve his kingdom for the rest of my life. Mm. We're talking to men's group today. Uh, I mentioned you actually because, well, 
we got a really powerful group of guys. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, I call it a men's group because it is a men's support group. Now, it just happens to be led by Bill Markham. Yeah. And not a whole lot of the guys that are, like, there's other pastors from other churches. There's other people mm-hmm. that struggle with faith. And it's just a men's group, but it's based in faith. And we're having the conversation today. is Like, it means so much to me. I get so much power from it and so much support. And... I get called on my crap too because you, you start building these lies and you start spewing these lies and you're good friends, the friends mm-hmm. that care enough to say, uh, you're full of shit, Jimmy. You, you like, I get that from them. And we were talking today about, you know, Lee, like I, I would love to do a Zoom call like we do with, today we had 13 guys on. Mm-hmm. And we talked for the first 45 minutes without talking about God or scripture or the Bible. We're talking about men. Mm-hmm. We're talking about our struggles personally and individually kind of going around the circle and, and then how to lead because I want it for everyone. Mm-hmm. And it's not a God thing. Like, it, yeah, it's a God thing, but it's not for me. I'm not like leading with the Bible, leading with scripture. Cause I'm not that guy. I don't know my Bible that well. I just should study a lot more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but the support network. And so we're, I was, I said, we should do a zoom call like this, you know, maybe, Cut the prayer out of the beginning. <laughs> we, we make it uh, secular so that it's a lead in because we forget that 60, 70% of the people that we see in our daily life believe in a higher power or God or even Jesus. Mm-hmm. As some, you know, the majority of people do. It doesn't mean they're, they're faithful or they have a connection to their faith. But I was always just saying, you know, I want to bring this Zoom call that's not... St- religious to the masses and uh, slowly i think i'm getting enough of the guys that they'll say yeah i'll get in there i'm not saying we can't talk about god because it's based in Mm -hmm. like this group is it's a men's support group but it's based most of yeah most of us are yeah we're all it's based in faith but we all struggle with it so the question was today, like, I want to do a Zoom call like this. I said, but can we bring, you know, not lead with the Bible? Like my dad used to call them Bible thumpers, you know, we ter- turn people off. And I noticed having the conversation with you, and I imagine you're no different out in the world, that the first thing you come back is your faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. And do you do you find that that, do you, do you find that people turn you down or turn you off or don't listen to you? Because, oh, you're one of those guys. Okay, forget yeah. about it because this is what I'm talking about. I'm <laughs> leading with a heart that's full of faith and that loves people, but not with scripture. You're wrong. I'm better than you because I'm Christian and you're not, or you don't go to church and I do or something. Well, the thing is, I'm not better than anybody else. Like, I'm very much just like everybody else. It's just, um, I just have a little bit of difference of what I believe, like... I believe that God is there for me. I believe that he has saved me from my sin. doesn't mean I don't sin. doesn't mean that I don't screw up because I definitely do. I'm not perfect to no means like at all. Um, I can list off a bunch of things in my head that just, just right now. Like, well, we're I, good at I, that. I, and that's how I yeah. even said that today. I said, I'm so good at like, like hearing the voice. You're a loser. Mm-hmm. Why can't you stop doing this? Why can't you stop doing that? And I'm way less good i'm not as good as celebrating my victories and going hey i'm really good at this one thing why don't Mm -hmm. i do that more (laughs) Mm -hmm. and the thing that always comes back to me is just that that fact that i am loved that god loves me so i don't really have to look for my my um what's it called i don't really have to look for recognition i don't have to look for validation in other people Mm -hmm. so that's the biggest thing that keeps coming back and i struggle with that even to this day where it's like oh sometimes i just like i need that validation and i i don't look for it in god and it just leads me into a hole of like i feel like garbage now this sucks what the heck like it, it, yeah mm-hmm. but how about when you lead with it though you find that people are just like oh go when i lead with I, it i was i go out with dirk once in a while he's a, yeah. you know a friend from church and whatnot mm-hmm. and and a vandalier or yeah Allison? out in beansville the f- Flower Dirk, yeah. yeah. I can never know how to say his last name. <laughs> but I had to say to him, like, oh, like dude, like, if we had, like, he's got a boat, and he invited me out, and he, yeah. you know, got a six-pack, and we went out and had a couple beers, yeah. and you know, it was a nice float, and it was a nice day. Sure. And I said, but, dude, I can't hang out with you the afternoon, for the whole afternoon, if everything in the conversation comes back to God. 
Like, can we can we can we talk about sports without talking about God? Like, I mean, I mean, when I lead with my faith, it doesn't really. It depends on the person that I talk to. Like, it if the person is like really hard against faith, then they're just gonna be turned off to me immediately. And then you I'll find like, that you lead with it verbally all the time. Not necessarily all the time, but uh, it always comes up mm-hmm. where it's like, no, this is what I do. Because again, this is my passion. Like mm. this is what this is where my passion and lies. That's as well. the context like, for me how my faith comes up now because my passion is the kids. Mm-hmm. And you know, I say the kids, the kids like your sister, mm-hmm. the mentoring, and then the video directing. So the yeah. fact that I'm connected, like I, I don't ever say, oh, oh you see, what, you should have seen what God did for me today. I'm more like, oh, this one kid at church today, mm-hmm. I was talking, and, and it was so cool. You know, mm-hmm. so I find that. It's only on my lips now because I'm involved in a mm-hmm. service position and I'm passionate about that end of it. So I end up talking about church. Yeah. Because I'm connected to it. Yeah. And honestly, I don't really see myself doing much else than mm-hmm. serving. I, I've i tried things. Like I went to college for a uh, for an industry and for this trade. I I, I sat there in, the, in class and I was really genuinely trying to think of like how do i fit in this job or how would i do here and i'm like this is not for me mm. this is not who i am this is not what i do i'm more showy and when i and if i think of myself doing a show it's worship mm. it's not really anything else i couldn't stand being at a rap show like i that wouldn't be my thing where it's like they're talking about constantly disrespecting people and like constantly dehumanizing females and that's just not my thing that's not how i think and that's not what i want to be supporting i want to be doing i want to be putting out the message of like god i want to be able to put that out i want to be able to worship him so yeah so what else is what are you doing at Central more than you were doing before? Like we met, you were doing lights, I think. Yes. Or and and you might have been moonlighting on even on camera a little bit here and there. So no. Uh, when I met you at Central, I was only doing lights okay. and then kids men. So no. <laughs> I was doing kids men. Ma- and lights. Do you want to be? Can you be a little bit more matter of fact about it? So no. Yeah. Uh, that's not. <laughs> so I was never on camera. <laughs> I, I wasn't on cameras at that point. Oh, yeah. uh, I was doing lights, and then maybe I would moonlight as the pro guy um, when, like, Tayez couldn't take over or someone who wasn't there. I love uh, Tayez. What's he up to? I oh, he's in kid. Toronto. I miss the kid. Yeah. I miss him so much. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's what I would do. I would moonlight as pro, and then I would do, like, kids camp and stuff and CYM, of course. Right. I wasn't really allowed behind the board. And it wasn't actually until like it wasn't Which actually board, the lighting board, the sound board. Oh, was still, yeah. Well, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I actually got no all offense, my. Derek. So that was my that was my experience that was my uh, volunteer stuff at Central, but outside of Central at high in high school I was doing all the sound stuff I was doing all the video stuff I was learning like I was learning the sound stuff on my own trying to figure it out getting some mentorships from here and there. And figuring stuff out and then like doing uh, like kids camp with Central. Right. Uh, the one year I ended up doing sound the whole time and it was like completely new to me and completely foreign. But I still did it and I still served with my whole heart and I did it well. Like I just had to be humble and ask for advice when I needed it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. But now comparison to then like. Now I am again doing everything with even camera work put in there. Like I'm running around shooting photography, doing photography video. I'm even doing like some live stuff video wise. I'm putting together video. I'm editing videos myself as well, which I was doing for maybe my YouTube channel, but not at the capacity that I'm even doing it now. I cannot get the video. So like, it's just too much, man. Like, it's a lot. On. It's my learning curve gets way steeper as my, as I age, mm-hmm. like I just don't catch on to things as quick anymore. And I get so frustrated by, it. I'm like, Oh, I can mm-hmm. pay a guy in India to do this for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the five sure bucks. <laughs> so you, uh, you're doing some video editing. What else, what, what else are you comparing? Like, Comparatively, what are you doing at Central more now? Um, 
a lot of what I'm doing at Central right now is video stuff where okay. I'm doing a lot of stuff with Justin, where I'm shooting with a camera. Yep. Um, I've got a lot of wor- I've got a lot of work to do with my shooting. Uh, I gotta get a little bit steadier with the camera that I'm working on right now. It's uh, it's gonna it's a little bit of a learning curve for me because again, my primary has been lights this whole time. So growing now to do more sound stuff, to do more camera stuff, to like really understand even lighting with cameras and understanding all of that theory and figuring out, oh, here are the settings on the camera. I need to adjust shutter speeds, aperture, uh, ISO, uh, my exposure stuff, like all that kind of stuff is the thing that I need to really learn now. And that's where, well, that's where I'm really getting to learn now. And I've even bought myself my own camera where I'm practicing at home. Nice. I'm figuring the stuff out on my own. And then I'm getting, again, getting that mentorship from like Justin Dreger or from people at Central who I like respect and who I actually look up to or even people outside of that where it's like, oh, I'm going to watch a YouTube video and it's going to be a Linus Tech Tips video talking about a camera. Mm-hmm. And I'll watch that or whoever else. Dive into the, the, your mentors a little bit. Who else has been teaching you and leading you? And that's what I constantly talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, the fatherlessness in society, our lack of eldership, our lack of mentorship, a lack of, you know, handholding and loving. Yeah. For especially boys, you know? Yeah. And like for me, um, to start, it was definitely like Andrew Hawk to begin with. Like from. He's at Mountain now, right? No, he's still at Central. Okay, uh, Alex, I was thinking of, sorry. You're thinking Alex, yeah. So, so say again, Andrew? Andrew Hawk, yeah. He okay. basically was a father figure for me, a good portion. And he's been my like life group leader oh. for the longest time. And now we're just really good friends and we hang out and we talk about stuff that's going on. And yeah, mm-hmm. he's been awesome for me. Um, Going on from that, Alex Smathers, definitely like, again, he's the one who showed me like, here's how you worship. Here's how you do these things. And here's how you volunteer and do all this with love and for God and actually helping me understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Um, Johnny Henderson, when he was around, definitely like a huge, Mm -hmm. huge influence for me. Um, He's been an influence on me. Yeah. (laughs) And Johnny was amazing like that. Like he's just such a cool guy. And I got to learn a lot from him, especially when it comes to uh, figuring out youth stuff. Um, Derek Elliotson, awesome for like teaching me how stuff works Mm -hmm. and Doug Hicks especially as well, where it's like Derek Elliotson was more the professionalism side and teaching me, okay, here is how it's done in the industry. Here's how, um, here's how like we do things at central. Here's the processes that go through. Um, here's how I want things to be organized and here's how you really, um, show professionalism in the workplace when it comes to all this technology. So like something that is really amazing is how he organizes his K, for example, every cable in there is like counted by him continuously to make sure that nothing is missing and to make sure that everything is like quality so that nothing is going to go wrong Mm -hmm. when he actually uses it or he has to run in and grab it. He knows exactly where everything is. He forces a strange amount of accountability out of you too. I'm not sure how just being with a guy like Derek Elliotson, I, I find my, like, there's no hiding. For me, yeah. <laughs> like he calls you on something and I go, yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. What yeah, happened like, again? You know what I mean? CYM last night, we used some lights that I didn't realize we weren't allowed to use. And I was like, oh, shoot. And he's like, okay, well, next time I'll be clearer with you. And I'm like, okay, cool. And he's, it's not like he's really angry. He's just like, he, That's not the, the he way takes this the time. Here, yeah. He takes the time to show you, here's what we can do better next time. Yeah. So that's the, the, another awesome thing about Derek. It's like sh- uh, showing uh, showing me how to like again show that professionalism and not be not be someone who is necessarily like again angry all the time or just like no. frustrated with something I'm doing wrong he takes the time and shows me here's how you can do it better yeah he he has a very good way of uh, correcting you with love i uh one time i hadn't been on a video switch very long mm-hmm. and justin came out with these brand new white sneaks okay and i was screwing around <laughs> I think it was during the service, and um, I told camera one to zoom in on his shoes, and I went quick to a quick zoom of just his shoes. Oh. And Derek's like, "Who's wh- what's going on?" And he, like thought it was a mistake. <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, sorry, that was me." He goes, "Well, what happened?" I go, "It was totally me. Like, I screwed that up." He goes, and then he's like, "Dude, that's like here, like that's funny, okay? In rehearsal between yeah. professionals, that's funny, but like." yeah that's not yeah there's no place for that here yeah and i couldn't i could not hide from him 
<laughs> and uh, you know, I apologized. And it, yeah. was, it was come up some other people in the booth, and yeah. you know, they you know, because we, we kind of went out, and I'm like, dude, it's it's me. It was on yep. me. No one else. Like, <laughs> and the thing is, you don't really have to scare, be scared about owning up to things with him too. Like, it's just yeah, no, own up to it. it. He's not gonna kill you. He's just gonna talk to you. No, he was hot. Really, he was hot. Okay, <laughs> he was not okay. happy. It, it's his gig. Like that's yeah. his show. He is accountable for everything that happens mm-hmm. there. So if you have know, one guy jerking around, and it re- then yeah. it's, it reflects on him ultimately. Like I'm like, ah ha ha, that was funny. <laughs> that yeah. will never happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I should say, you know, one of the greatest gifts uh, your family's ever given to me on that job was doing the Christmas service. We did five of them. Mm. And when Bella did that thing, I mm-hmm. broke. Like, I mean, and uh, Carolina and I, like I talked to Carolina, I said, tell Bella, like, cause we broke and we went for lunch and they fed us downstairs and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I'm just tell her to move the th- something back. And so we got a clear shot of her from your camera, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know the story, but I haven't told this much live, but um, I got home Christmas Eve that night after shoot. I think we did three and two, we two Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got Sounds home right. and then I start, you know, how you watch your service. I want to see how the music flows, how the mm-hmm. camera's working. Like w- my rhythm, if I've captured the mood or I'm just switch, 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 switch. You know, you switch too fast. You lose everyone. There's a real yeah. art to that, which I'm still learning. Uh, but it's like playing a musical instrument, switching mm-hmm. those cameras. And the last service Carolina had a perfect angle on Bella there was no and so I wasn't even going to watch it because I only usually watch the music because that's when I have to switch quickly but when I yeah. got to Bella's story she read that story the Christmas story and it was dramatic she was taking her she had her dolls out and then she was putting the the figurines under the tree and under the yeah. the, the, uh, na- the nativity scene and I broke. I absolutely broke. Because here I am probably feeling sorry for myself subconsciously. It's yeah. Christmas Eve. I'm alone. I'm watching my ch- my work on my at my church, you know. Mm-hmm. And when it got to that scene, I just, I broke. I absolutely broke. To the point where, like, I'm texting you. I'm a mm-hmm. puddle. I'm yeah. a mess. I don't think you got it. That's why I called you. I'm like, yeah. I need to talk to someone. <laughs> but it was so freaking beautiful. Just... You know, she's she was eleven or something. Mm-hmm. Like there's something about the she's youth. She's eleven now. So she was like ten. Yeah, something about that the youth yeah. the innocence of youth and then your sister shooting the camera and then yep. our whole relationship through your mom yep. and the family and stuff like that. Absolutely broke I say broke me, but it was beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't know, I was emotional beyond like I was a puddle. I was I was yeah. a a blubbering idiot just bawling my eyes out here not sure exactly why but just taken by the beauty i wasn't sad mm-hmm. i was just like wow so yeah. and i owe just... that gift to you guys man I and mean, your mother gets <laughs> yeah i tell her all the time how much yeah. that moment of, you know meant to me and whatnot so but and i miss you guys man it. i missed having breakfast with you guys every few weeks and yeah. well, it used to be every week there for a while but mm-hmm. in the basement of church but it'll get back to normal soon yeah. hopefully i hope so too um there's definitely the hope for that because then I can actually maybe get the job that maybe I want soon. And yeah. yeah. Oh, man. What else are you up to? So other than that, I'm just kind of kicking around unemployed right now because it's just how stuff has worked. You're in I was between jobs. Yeah. I was up at camp. Then I went. Out yeah, to, I thought you were staying up there for the duration. I thought you were. That was the here. hope. Oh. And then uh, just with guidelines and stuff, it just wasn't realistic for them to have anyone up there. Oh, okay. And then even money just wasn't coming in so that they couldn't really run the camp. So oh, right. logistically it didn't work. So There's I still probably an it. option in the future there for you. Oh, heck yeah. Like where I can just head up. Like I went up a couple no, I of mean, times as a job. Um, see that I'm not too sure. Mm hmm. I, I just don't know if that's necessarily the place I should be right now. I love it, and I'm definitely going to go up and visit and maybe do like a couple of jobs. I think I offered to help them out with – because they're opening it back up slowly, and I offered to help with what they I can right now, seeing as, I, again, I don't have a job, so I'm not really too worried about mm-hmm. losing time. Um, So I said, yeah, I, I can come up, do some stuff if you need it, maybe clean some stuff, do some tech stuff because I know you guys need that, and uh, just made myself available. Mm-hmm. And that's all I can really do at this point. I told Derek the same thing. I'm like, dude, first call for production. If it's okay, 
I yeah. want to be the first guy on. Like, yeah. I'm so thirsty for that place, you know? And the same thing went out the other day. They said, hey, we're starting kids ministry back up. I'm like, yeah. pick me yeah. now. Like, I'm ready now. I miss those kids, mm -hmm. man. And I know, like, Corey would definitely love to have you. And uh, same with Jess. Like, they mm -hmm. would love to have you right now. Like, Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't heard back, though, as far as production or, or kids ministry. But it'll, okay. it won't be long now. I'm sure it'll come. Yeah. 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 Any other mentors you uh, missed on? Uh, well, Justin Dreger is the newest one that's yeah. coming up for me. Like, uh, he's taken me another to... great soul. Yeah, he's yeah. he's amazing and spectacularly talented in everything mm -hmm. that he does. And he's taking me to do a bunch of stuff this just this year, where he's going to be sitting down with me almost uh, basically weekly. I'm um, not basically, yeah, weekly, and he's just going to sit down and take time out of his day to wow. show me. Okay, here's how I can be better. Um, whether it be camera or just connect with me and like where I'm doing spiritually. And then as I go to school in January, um, he's going to help me out with that too. And he's just like, he's taking time out of his day to really like pour into me and spectacular. Mm. Um, and yeah, like it started when he invited me to go to overflow, um, 2018, 2019, 2019 overflow. Uh, he invited me out and he's like, Hey, I would love for you to do this stuff. And I was like, Oh sure. I'll come. And I hit, like I, I hitched the hitched a ride down from St. Thomas to St. Catharines, met up with him at the church and then booked it up to Kitchener and cool. had an amazing time there and, um, met some cool people there, got to do some cool things because of the opportunity they gave me at overflow. And yeah. And I just got to learn a ton from him as well. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm cool. going to be learning constantly from him. Yeah, you never stop learning, and thank God we've got those that wisdom around us, right? Mm -hmm. And the experience, and he's, I mean, it's like Derek. I saw him on drums one day. I'm like, dude, you play drums too? Yeah, he's, yeah uh, bass, drums, guitar, piano. Yeah. Uh, he does everything. <laughs> and then he's a recorder, producer, an engineer, yep. a mixer, a master, a, but a DJ. A, like, yep. There's nothing the guy doesn't do. And he even so. dips his finger. He even dips his toes into lighting as as well. Like, it's just insane. Well, how that's much what he can the do. I, you know. I have this thing I want like. I can run a camera yeah. at Central, like one or two. I don't I don't want to be near the stage. I don't want I got this thing about people seeing me, right? I, I wanna be wanna be I'm either on the stage <laughs> as the main guy or I'm behind completely behind yeah. the scenes where nobody can see me, right? But uh uh I, I wanted to learn all the stations. Yeah. I wanna learn pro. Like pro can't I mean, there's got a, probably a technique to it, but that's you know, it it looks pretty easy, just keeping up with the words and making sure that it's they go just on, you know. Timing. But the lighting, the I look at the lighting board, I'm like, mm, yeah, that's not so easy. That's going to take a little bit of, but yeah. And the video, the video was easy to learn. Like I was switching the first week mm -hmm. logistically, no problem, but look at it and it's choppy. Yep. There's no mood. There's, there's a real feel to it. So I've come a long way there, mm -hmm. but and then I find myself getting too deep into the technology. Like you've got overlays and like, I don't do the wipes. I don't, you know, I'm not really sure what a hard yeah. nine is. Like you really got to learn the back end of it. Mm -hmm. But I, I always thought it'd be cool to, to learn every station, you know, so that if the sound man calls in, I can roll in. Yeah. The, the lighting guy calls in because I'm like one of the most flexible, you know, single with no kids type of thing. Mm -hmm. So they know like if there's a hole to fill. Like I put myself up as the emergency guy. Call me with short notice. I can be there anytime. Usually, you know, yeah. but I thought I was thought that learning all the posts wouldn't be such a bad thing. And like, that's kind of the position I'm in right now where it's like, I know all the posts. I mean, he's not going to trust me with the soundboard because he trusts nobody, but <laughs> the soundboard's um, his baby. It's his little baby. The first time I went there, Carlene set it up. So it wasn't through the volunteer. Well, it was, she's the head of volunteers, right. but she just said, okay. She set it up. So I would shadow. Derek on oh. the soundboard. Okay. And then so he was really nice about it and very tactful, but it was something like this at the end of the service. He's like, okay, so you can watch the next, you know, you can go in the booth for the next couple of services. If you want to hang out, you're free to go. But um, this is where we start our volunteers right there. He points at camera one. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay. We start our volunteers here. So yeah. he didn't say, see the soundboard? Just forget about that kid. Yeah. But he didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I went on camera for a year and then I'm like, what's that guy doing? Oh, he's video director. Yeah. He's what? I want to do that. So I guess yeah. what I'm doing now. And now I'll go on, on camera, but I prefer not to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now that I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's just fill where you can. And that's, that's the, that's the thing where it's just be like, be a servant and be like open to open and available to what is that is needed for whatever it's going to be like who are you mentoring um you don't have to name them but at you the have moment a, some um, peeps that you're bringing in or bringing along or counseling on a regular basis honestly Teas was my only my only yeah. guy for the longest time and mm -hmm. at the moment i've got no one mm -hmm. um i'm sure someone will come up god's mm -hmm. gonna put someone in my way um but as in my own life right now i just need to do a lot of like figuring stuff out too so yeah, yeah. Maybe he's just maybe he's just waiting until I have some more stuff. Like he knows that I have some more stuff solidified in my head until he puts. Yeah, where someone do you else. draw the line between just waiting and going and taking it? Like, um, I mean, you can't just eat junk fruit food every day and then pray for health. You can, no. you really got to get off your ass and take initiative yeah. to go and do it yourself. So yeah. where do you draw the line between just sitting back and waiting for God to drop somebody in your lap and going, "Hey, you want to come along with me?" It's because it's, it's uncomfortable to do that, eh? Ye, well, I haven't been, I haven't had that be like mm -hmm. an issue for me. It's just more of actively looking, but also understanding that not everybody's going to be the right person. Like, just kind of, how do I say that? For example, it's like you continuously, like, you work out. You continuously go to the gym and stuff, and you don't really see the difference until, like, well after in time. Um, in this case, where it's looking for someone, it's like, I'm going to continue to keep my eyes open for someone, and I'm going to continue to, like, exercise my gifts and exercise my stuff. But um, until, like, someone that I feel like is actually passionate about it and actually wants to learn, that's when I'm going to, like, say, okay, I think maybe got there's a connection here. Or they're just going to be put in my lap mm -hmm. out of nowhere which is what happened with Teas, where it's like yeah. alex was like hey ben so you didn't know daniel before then no no idea oh i thought you went to school with him oh, uh, no, so i did go to school, school. Oh, i do go okay. to school i did go to school with him at eden but at the time i had no idea who he was he was new to central he was new to all this and alex was like hey there's this kid um so would he come to cym he came to cym oh, that was your first and that was my first interaction with him where it was like, like okay i need a guy on pro I job. was on lights and <laughs> I was running around doing everything. Like, it's you know a, it's me. It's a perfect CYM. introduction when you're in that booth because mm -hmm. you bring someone into that booth and they're like, oh, this is cool. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter who they are. They're impressed by the technology yeah. of it all. Yeah. So he was probably like that too. Yeah, I'm sure he was. And I'm sure you could get him on and get something out of him too. I should get him on. Yeah. Just shoot him a message. I'm sure he's down. I'm yeah. I'm sure he's got time. Yeah. But is he in town? He's in Toronto. Oh, okay. So like Scarborough, actually, he's All he's right. out there. So does he come back very often? I can get him by Zoom. Yeah, yeah, Maybe that'll be the <laughs> that'll be the way Time! to get him. Yeah. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Tayas. 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 Time. Time. <clears throat> Time. <laughs> Brother, how can people get a hold of you? I love you. Thanks for coming in. I'm just going to cut it here. I, I should get you back and get, go a little bit more because we could talk for yeah. hours on this kind of stuff. And and Heck I'm, yeah. I'm glad you honored your commitment today and. Yeah. Me too, uh, because it was the perfect day to cancel because yeah. I've got a great excuse for it. But I'm like, no, maybe I can make this work. So I call my friend and filter out. And uh, yep, yeah, it turns out I can make it all work, but I don't want to be late for my last commitment here. So how can people yeah. get a hold of you? And what so else do you want to wrap up by saying? Over Facebook definitely is a good way to get a hold of me. Like I'm putting you, you up see, now. Because you've already yeah. advertised me. Like it's Benjamin Morales. As well. um, and you've got a vanity Facebook page too. You can go to facebook.com slash blast ub blast yeah up. Blast. yeah just go to what's where's the nickname come from what's so all about i uh i loved explosions as a kid and there was this game that <laughs> i loved, I loved. Explosions as a kid. <laughs> I, there was did? this game i loved called ub funkies and okay. that's the end of it so like blast up blast up there you go there he is and it was originally blast ub but nobody was saying it right so i just gave up and started calling myself blast up wow that's good man. and honestly it's ca caught on and that's where you can find me everywhere you can find me on facebook under blast of instagram blast of youtube twitch uh you name it like now tell me about your twitch where have you gotten to on twitch because i have much work to do on twitch i only have i a quit few <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, did you quit Twitch? Because yeah. uh, you're just um, you're just telling me that you got to a certain level or whatever. Yeah, I got affiliate and stuff, and I was like getting, I was going hard with it, and then when I was uh, when I was doing stuff, I got a girlfriend, and it was like, okay, oh, I've got something else to put my time into. We could do a complete and, show on you and your girlfriend. Pardon me. We could do a whole show on having a girlfriend because we've never even talked at that level. Yeah, I'm still, say before, sorry. I'm still figuring that stuff out. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no. Figuring that out until the day you die, son. <laughs> <laughs> I got the girlfriend, and then it was just like, okay. And then I just started piling on with stuff where I was like, okay, I'm doing this and this and this now and this now. And then it. Then at one point, I just had to sit down. And I was like, okay, realistically, and because my stream quality has been going down, like it's been going down way down with the amount of stuff that I've been p- picking up. So I'm like, okay, realistically. Can I dedicate time to stream and have the quality that I want and then also be able to have the energy to do everything else that I have in my life Mm -hmm. that is more of a priority even than streaming because right now I'm not making much off of streaming. Right. And like with the amount of time that I put into it to get it ready to make it look good and the amount that I'm actually making out of it, it's just not, Mm -hmm. it's not correlating to be worth it. So I was like, okay, I could actually practice some other things and actually get better at some other things and come back to it later. And- or you could, um, what do they call it? You can embed that part into your new work somehow. You know, like, uh, like- Gary V style, you document and stream everything you have. Guided, right. You know, like <laughs> don't create content, document Right. Just film everything. So there's maybe a way that this all comes full circle as far as your new career and your old hobby. Yeah. And like as far as Twitch goes, I'm probably going to be – I'm streaming tomorrow. Like I am doing some stuff here and there. So I'm doing a stream, playing Among Us tomorrow at uh, 6.50 is when we go live. Okay. No. So – we go live at six and we go for two hours. We're playing Among Us. It's going to be a fun time. Um, got me and some buddies coming on and just. Are you Blast up there too? Oh yeah, everywhere. So if I just if I just search Blast, up. look up Twitch.tv slash Blast up and you shall find me. <laughs> look at that. Dot. Oh, shoot. Slash. <laughs> blast up. See, I don't have the. Oh, do I have Jim Fannin? Yeah, there you are. Yeah. So there so you are. So tomorrow at 6 o'clock, you'll be yep. here. You'll be live. I shall up. be playing uh, some video games if you're into that. I'm not sure if your audience is necessarily into that. but uh, No. Okay. I don't have an audience, and if I did, they wouldn't be streamers or gamers or anything like that. But I appreciate your uh, thinking about us. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be there. Benjamin, I love you. Thank you. Uh, I should say also thank you. Um, you made a huge difference for me when this mm. pandemic hit. Really give me that uh, video capture. Yes, and I can see it down there. You yeah, got your I, own now. I got and... the S version, which has no latency, which like is wonderful. None. I didn't. I didn't realize there was a difference, and I was just going to go buy the one that you gave, you gave me to. And I'm like, well, I buy, yeah. I might as well buy the what is it, UDS or what is it called? It's just the it's the Elgato HD 60s. HD 60s is what you right. have, right? Uh, I have just the HD 60s. What a difference that before. made for me, though. So thank you. Yeah. You got me set up. You got me the basics on OBS, and yep. you said you'll figure it out. And you're right, I did. It took yep. a while, and in the very beginning, I'm sorry, I was calling you like every couple of days, going, "Dude, that's all fine. my things," because I'd go in there and they're all gone, and I'm like, "What happened? I've saved yeah. all these profiles and they were gone." I, I I don't know what I was doing it wrong. <laughs> But I got it, and but when the t- pandemic hit, it was early on into the thing, and mm-hmm. I'm like, what do I need to be able to do this? Yep. So I can stream TV. I can even stream copy guarded TV now. Yeah. Yeah, I figured that one out. You just put it through an old splitter, and it takes well, the copy go. guard off. And I try try not to do too much copyrighted stuff, but yeah, if you're doing like a, a commentary where you're in the corner and you got it in the back, or you got it in the corner and it's you, mm-hmm. you you should be able to get away with that. So Honestly, creative. you just need to familiarize yourself with all yeah. the laws. There is just making yeah. yourself no, making yeah. it known. So that but you can thank avoid you for that because you made a there. difference. Just loaning me that HD. Uh, yeah, whatever it's called, uh, HD 60s. Uh, like you gave me that thing for probably a couple months. Yeah. Right. And you weren't at the using time, it, I, didn't I guess, really or whatever. It, like, and uh, so, yeah, yeah uh, I appreciate that because you made a difference for me. So, thank you very much. And just on the way out, mm-hmm. if you don't mind, I'm just going to put Mason's picture up of where I'm going right now. And uh, we'll just do a time of silence on the way out for my kid, man. Yeah. 
gutted today. So thank you, brother. I um, appreciate that. Blast up. Benjamin Morales said, if you need him, and this is where Heck I'm going. Heck yeah. Peace, love, yep. hug your neighbor. <laughs>